everybody and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. Please fill up this form so you can keep watching this video. Before you fill it, you cannot keep watching it. Now that you have done that, thank you for coming to this episode review, or, well, comic review in this case. This is James Cork, and with me I have Norman Sanso. Fill out form A, paragraph B, section C. And don't forget to send it to counter D. Now, they already did that. What they have to do is fill form J7, and they go to the counter color, slightly salmon, it's not pink, and then go up the stairs on room 37, where they will find awesome brand new reviewer, Silver Quill! Vote Silver Quill in 2016, then vote for him again in 2018, then take my candidate recommendation in 2020. And I, I'm pretty sure I could do some actual government work in between. We'll, we'll see how the schedule works out. <laughs> And as you may notice, we're already taking the piss at the bureaucracy, which we are going even further than what this comic does. And uh, in case you're wondering what we are reviewing today, it's the Friends Forever issue number 15, starring Applejack and Mayor Mare, written by Bobby Curno, with art by Brenda Hickey and colors by Heather Breckel. Now, in this comic, Applejack finds herself into a bit of a pickle when the, uh, the Ponyville City Hall... Uh, says that her barn is slightly too tall. So she has to face the troubles and the horrors of bureaucracy with the help of an unlikely ally, ally in the form of Major Mayor. So this comic from the premise and all that, it's it's like super slice of life, even more so than usual, because I mean, what is bureaucracy have to do with colorful, happy little ponies? So... Uh, guys, what did you think of this very oddly, uh, very oddly put together comic? What, what's your opinion? Well, I once said that the only way for Applejack to be a true underdog in a tale is if you got her away from Ponyville, away from her friends, away from her family. She'd have to be isolated because she is, in many ways, the heart of Ponyville. I had not considered bureaucracy, so props to this comic for uh, showing a place where Applejack's simple, direct nature is completely at odds with her surroundings. Uh, so mad props there, and I enjoy seeing her navigate the insanity that is bureaucracy. <laughs> this is also the first time Mayor Mayor's really gotten to have the spotlight. We don't, she's been a presence, but she's never been an active participant. And in later comics, she's, she's, ugh, she doesn't get a good showing. Oh gosh. But, but the thing is that while the mayor gets a presence, you don't really get to know her as a character until the very, very end. And that's where she shines. That's where the Friends Forever really lives up to its title. There are some head-scratching moments in the middle. Well, Silver is politics. Everything's head-scratching. <laughs> Actually, it's uh, it's not even the politics. It's Sweetie Belle. Oh, okay. Okay, that that's different. That's something different there. <laughs> But I made a terrible mistake. <laughs> but I don't know. In, with the comic here, I find it fascinating with what they are trying to do here. Because to use politics as a story narrative, that's rarely used. Like I do remember a few shows that use this as um, voting for class president or whatnot. There's a few shows here and there, but. In this setting where the government's already established and using that as the driving force for the sh comic, it's interesting. And having Mayor Mayor be the good guy, that's interesting. I do like where this is going. She's the most useful politician I have seen in decades. Let's put it like that. And <laughs> we're not, we're not better. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're not. Uh, this is, this is, oh no, I mean, come on. The, I think this is an ingenious way to turn Applejack into her, uh, to put her on her own. Just give her the spotlight and have her, yes, she can actually hold on her own without the support of the main six. Because I think that the, the other uh, Friends Forever comics that she has been in had a main six as one of her uh, partners. Like it was uh, her and Pinkie Pie or her and uh, Rarity. But in this comic, she is not fighting a giant monster. She's not battling against forces that can end Equestria. No. She's dealing with something as normal and common as bureaucracy. <laughs> and the way, 
the way that this, in my opinion, this comic does political and social commentary way better than the previous comic with Luna and, and Spike because it's it's funny, it's visually interesting, it's relatable. Oh my god, it's relatable. <laughs> those endless queues to get those forms to fill them and then go wait in front of another queue just to be told that you have to go to this other queue and wait for a long, for a long time. Oh my god, we all have been there. Like when you become a grown up, that's kind of like the first experience that you have is to, to, to suffer through through bureaucracy. And this comic does it so well. This is definitely one of my favorite of the Friends Forever series. Most definitely, probably probably number five, probably on the top five. It, it is. It's it's so much fun. But uh, uh, stop me from praising it, and let's just go talk about it because there is a lot to talk about this comic. There is so many things in it already. Right. So. Uh, we shall start from the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this one I think we can go pretty sequential. Yeah, yeah. No, let's not go with th- with things. Let's go with uh, with episodes, with scenes. So uh, we start with Applejack. She's plowing the fields. She's having fun. She's feeling accomplished. And then she gets presented with a uh, with a complaint. According to them, the height of Citapalikor's barn is too high, three hoofs above regulation, apparently. So Applejack has to go take care of that. But do you see the horse um, in that picture? Mm-hmm. That is one big horse. They got trouble shoes to measure this thing. <laughs> <laughs> but you do know that this brings up the whole uh, Applejack raising the barn over and over again. Like <laughs> That makes it funny in the sense where, okay, it was legal when it was first brought up. And then after the whole mess with the Paris Sprite, the other things that happened to the barn, like <laughs> sheep, probably add a few hooves to it. <laughs> they, 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 next time it gets destroyed, and it will, <laughs> they can. Oh yes, uh, they can rebuild it shorter. <laughs> also, no, further love... proving that the guy. Go on, go. On. Uh, oh, just say that Applejack's doing her best Big Mac impersonation in that first panel. Oh yeah, with the what you would call that? Yolk. The yolk. With the plow. The yolk. Yeah, mm, the yolk. The yolk. Yes, it's uh, it's funny because even when the barn is not getting destroyed, it's still giving Applejack grief. It's just <laughs> so funny. It's like that's another way to find a way for the barn to give her trouble. Is that no? Let's not destroy it. Let's just make it illegal. <laughs> so in the end, it probably was a racist barn. Who knows? Oh god, no. <laughs> uh, oh gosh. I, yeah, I went there. Um. But yeah, and also I I do like the uh, we should talk one of these days about the art style of Brenda Hickey because those faces and the way that the ponies hold things and all that 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 they, they, they I don't know they are so weird but so funny at the same time and that that city official wow hey, she, but Applejack is oh yeah she knows she knows how to talk with her mouth full <laughs> uh, oh, no. yeah she does. I thought only Monica Lewinsky knew that. No, <laughs> not going there. God. Maybe, maybe, maybe that that the, that pencil on her flank no, indicates no, no. that next she's page, very good at page. sharpening pencils. Next page. Next page. <laughs> next page. What, what the boss cut. says. Next page. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get edited out of this entire show. <laughs> oh, we are so going to get kicked out of the. We're, I know we're gonna have to fill our our. Um, uh, fire forms and all that. This is, this is going to take forever. File uh, unemployment, <laughs> social security, <laughs> universal health care, uh, uh, unemployment fees. Uh, there you go. Total, you get a hundred dollars. No. Uh, wait a minute. You have to pay this tax. Okay, that is a hundred and twenty-seven dollars worth of taxes. So you mm. get minus twenty-seven dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the grown-up world, kids. Uh, anyway, they so, were learning mm. the word taxes. <laughs> so basically, we've got the googly eyes, glasses pony. Yes. The, is this the first time? Is this the first time that we see him? I yep. think that we have seen him before, no, right? I believe this no? is the first time. Oh. He he does have the most unique glasses in that they're actually practical. Mm-hmm. You see True. ponies wear, with glasses usually, and they're either just balanced perfectly on the nose. This guy has straps around his ears. Bravo. And I, I don't want to bring this up, but this pony has my hairstyle. Does he? Yeah. Take a look. See, the front mane almost same. Do you have the same glasses, Norman? No, I don't wear glasses. God dang it. 
<laughs> uh, but it's the it's it's this conversation, this kind of like dialogue back and forth that Applejack has with the with uh, the clerk pony. It's just mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's almost like you, you you cannot fight against this this kind of thing. Uh, it's like. Yeah, like, see, first you need to ask some questions. Is this the first citation you received? Yes. Uh, and that's, that's like the end of it. You're never gonna get out of that kind of dialogue. Ooh. <laughs> that's the problem with bureaucracy. It's done to keep you trapped. That's done even more, uh, obvious when he has to go and leaves Applejack there for so long that spider webs start to grow on her, on her head. <laughs> oh, wow. And then he completely forgets her. Now, here's the thing. I've, I've worked jobs where bu- you had to follow bureaucratic rules. You have to ask all these questions. I can promise no one was ever as excited as this guy. <laughs> you really uh, like well, his job. I guess so. He really enjoys the, the procedure, I guess. But even the people who work bureaucracy hate it. <laughs> they, we, uh, there's this desire to just ha- ha- take the simple road, but no. Bureaucracy is all about covering the government's tracks, so you can't sue them. Well, it's logical because no, That's not your gonna... logic. I want to go home. <laughs> so does everyone. So does everyone. Uh, this is going to be a harder review than I thought. It might be, but no, it's like when 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 he comes back, he he leaves again, and then he returns with the biggest stack of forms that she ha- that Applejack has to fill, and I'm like. That's nowhere near as many as I had to fill one time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I should find, I, I actually find this somewhat relatable because when I was living in Madrid, uh, we, we <laughs> did build, uh, we had our own house, we built it, everything. And on the, on the highest floor of the house, we had a window that had like a triangular shaped, shaped roof on top of the window, okay? And apparently that was against the regulations of the city hall. So they kept us on a legal battle for three years until they completely forgot about it. <laughs> wow. They literally forgot about it. We filled the forms to fight against it. We never heard back from them. Three years later, the the the, the case prescribed. So it's like, okay, now it's legal because we forgot about it. <laughs> wow. I think they had bigger problems in their hands. True that. Mm. But the next page is fun. I, I like this page. The, this is this is my favorite page of the entire comic, by the way. This is awesome. Like, because that's literally what bureaucracy is. It's a labyrinth out of which you have no escape. Kids, can you help Applejack through the... <laughs> can you help Applejack through the bureaucracy? This is what I mean. It's like, this is... It's fun, it's funny, it's visually interesting, and it's such a backhanded slap. At the bureaucracy, that is like that is such a be- much better uh, uh, social. Uh, uh, how do you call it? Um, social speech or like social critique or or political criti- criticism than the entire Friends Forever issue fourteen. Is like it's so much better. It's done so much better and so much more interesting True. and effective. True, but in review fourteen, we get to talk about Kung Fury. <laughs> Well, well, well. Let's all uh, keep it focused, okay? There is, there is no laser players. raptors in this country. Oh, well, they need a Form 57D for laser Aww. raptors. Bureaucracy yeah, makes everything yeah, yeah. boring. Yeah, but, but, but before that, you need to you need to fill Form Set 20, which is allowing you to travel through time. Oh. Although I will praise this pony's dedication to his job because <laughs> when Applejack is looks ready to kill him. <laughs> When she is as close to murder as I think any pony has ever been on this show, not even against Tyrek was there such malign, uh, he is willing to say, you'll need a form Z42. <laughs> he is laying down his life for his profession. I may not respect the choice, the chosen job, but I see dedication. <laughs> and I have to say the art for this one, like, in my entire history of reviewing pony comics, which is not that long, but Applejack's face here in these two panels, these two panels are the most threatening panels I've seen. Like, we, we had the Queen Chrysalis 
co- uh, comic where her face was scary and menacing and all that not. But in this page, I can see death in Applejack's eyes. Like, she is willing to kill. I see dead clerks. <laughs> <laughs> you soon will be seeing one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, well, the, the, the art is coming from the same artist who did the, the Pinkie Pie and Twilight Sparkle Friends Forever comic. So, of course, there is going to be a lot of saniness, a lot of craziness. Like, that, that labyrinth is, uh, very similar to that little board game that we had oh, on that yeah. one, Friends Forever issue. So it is, it is clear that Brenda Hickey has a lot of fun when it comes to work and draw for this comic. It's like, you can see, you can feel the kinetic energy going mm-hmm. in each one of these panels. And the characters keep themselves interesting and, and fun with the, with their many facial expressions. I mean, just, and, uh, of course, comes to the rescue of our poor little clerk who's about to turn into a flattened piece of paper, <laughs> comes Mayor Mare with sparkles and shine all over, ready to show Applejack how things run and work in uh, in City Hall. And yet, she doesn't recognize Applejack. <laughs> and Applejack introduces herself as this is their first meeting. Either, I'm going to assume that Applejack suffered traumatic brain damage... <laughs> And lost part of her memory due to the tr- due to the events of this bureaucracy, and she has actually forgotten she knows Mayor Mayor because she says, "My name is Applejack, and my farm, Sweet Apple Acres." Got a citation? Yeah, Applejack. This woman gave you a send off, and you didn't come back with squat. Well, th- this, this sadly is this is the part of the comic that it, this, this is the part of the, the the writing that goes, "Hey, hey, new readers." We are putting you up to speed. Are we ready to go? Yeah? Good? Good. Let's go. Well, this is... Okay, this this small panel here... This small panel here took me for a loop. Like, it threw me off a bit because... Hello, my name is Mary Mare. And, well, didn't Applejack and Mary Mare kind of know each other because of the whole last roundup incident? Like... Yeah, that's the thing. Like, yeah, I mean... Yeah, they know each other. They do know each other. There is no need for them to talk to each other like that. I can kind of see the mayor doing it just because this is how the day is going for Applejack. Mm-hmm. Nobody recognize her in City Hall. Yeah. Forget it. Forget it, AJ. Mm-hmm. It's bureaucracy town. But yeah. Applejack, she, she must be suffering brain damage from all this. I, I will not accept any other answer. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, but still, this is just a small, what's more called this bump on the road for the whole comic. It doesn't really matter that much. It is something we shouldn't get too hung up, but it is worth noting. Mm hmm. So, yeah, but, uh, okay, no, I, I, yeah, I guess that in that point, the writing kind of gets uh, one on the, on the floating line. But like I said, it's the curse of having to, uh, having to have, it's the curse of the TV show. Uh, oh, you have to keep each one of the episodes self-contained so we can do reruns. That's why sometimes you have comics like uh, like the first 10 pa- like the first 3 pa- 3 or 4 pages of the friends forever with rarity and babs that was also exposition town mm-hmm. every time that happens i uh, i always have oh this is for the people who have never read the comics or who have never watched the show okay fine i i need this it's i don't know i don't find it a problem the more the easier you make it accessible to others, the better for the actual comic. The more people you can bring in, the more you can bring to the herd. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, I can understand how that can be annoying. Uh, but, yeah, they step into a corridor that has all the paintings and all the portraits of the mayors that came before Mayor Mare, which are actually quite many, now that you think about it. Just look at all those mayors. I... Either ponies have a weird t- lifespan, or they have a worse government than South Africa. <laughs> hey. Well, uh. this, is, this is a town on the edge of the Everfree Forest. Ah, true. Which at one point yeah. was, was where no pony ever returned. Now it's, uh-huh. just, a, now it's just a revolving door. <laughs> uh, my guess is that Mayor Mayor's predecessors were very short-lived, and there's a high turnover rate. <laughs> Maybe that's why the mayor stays indoors all the time. Or maybe she has a deep political agenda, and a la House of Cards, she's willing to do anything to survive. <laughs> mayor I... Mary's Kevin Spacey, I like that. I... No comment. 
Uh, no comment here. I mean, uh, by the uh, way, I just realized my comment about South Africa that was a bit un- unwarranted. I meant blow. to say Greece. <laughs> Lower blow. You do know we have fans from Greece listening to this, right? I am so sorry for you guys. You have no idea. Uh, I really am sorry. But anywho. Don't come to Spain. We are not any better. <laughs> no, I mean, no, I'm not sorry because of what I said. I mean, I'm sorry because they are from Greece. Oh. Uh, <laughs> next page. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's what Applejack's, uh, meets the, uh, takes her to, what, the, the room where they sort everything? I don't know. Oh, the, Department of Building Management. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is where you start to lose all faith in phony kind. <laughs> uh, oh, well, like, like humanity is doing things differently. <laughs> well, Silver, you always did say that the ponies live in a world of sunshine and rainbow. Now we got something that's equivalent to what we have. Chaos. I, I would wish that on anyone. Discord is looking at this and saying, no, no, that's none of me. That's on you guys. <laughs> Discord is Discord is kind of like going, oh my god, you guys, you should turn it down like a little bit, like you know, <laughs> take it down a notch. Like, okay, I'm the agent of chaos and disharmony, but even for me, this is overdoing it. This isn't even fun chaos. This is this is just soul crushing. <laughs> ah. This is the kind of things I can see happening in this kind of places where. They fight for the smallest of reasons. And yet the most, and yet the most funny of reasons. I mean, what better way to satirize government bickering than to reduce it to the most absurd things? I mean, uh, when you get down to it, this is basically every political debate either. This is all wrong. No, you're all wrong. But yeah, well, you're stupid. You're stupid too. <laughs> so true that. So true that. Uh, but what if I, I don't agree you? with you. I disagree with you. <laughs> I'm not going to see from your point of view. What are they fighting about anyway? Like I, I forgot. Paper clips? They were fighting over paper clips. Oh, God. Yes. <laughs> ah, yes. Small of reasons. And, well, Applejack introduces herself. And they go to the next room, which is, what again? The... Fountain, the... fountain, uh, fountains and public water. To make sure that they are not too cold or not too warm. And the guys doesn't, and the guy doesn't even know what he's, <laughs> what he has to do. You, you can see that Applejack here is getting frustrated with the whole. Yeah, Applejack's that... starting to lose it. <laughs> She's terrified. She's like, what is happening to my beloved hometown? I, and we are in your hooves. We depend on you. Oh God. We're, we're so bone. Oh. And things don't get better on on the next page where like Mayor May is just taking pictures. It's like, oh yeah, I'm the best. I look awesome. Oh, the Department of Dragon Relations. This is uh, as good as the relations themselves. Oh. Uh, Spike is not the best uh, the representative that you have between to to meddle between ponies and dragons. I tell you, read the le- the last comic. <laughs> oh wow! But yeah, we 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 are introduced to a whole slew of things that Mir Mir shows Applejack like the PR department, the dragon department the pony the record pony will sit, the, the, the records that are all scrolls paper and she's taking a torch <laughs> and what seems to be like a, Applejack is kind of like wielding what seems to be like a, like a rat killer po- yeah oh he's a fire extinguisher I thought he was like rat killing poison or something like probably that. <laughs> because that's, that's the rats oh uh... god and then, like, there's uh, also pet form. Uh, yeah, I mean, okay. And Fluttershy is charming the charming the glasses off the desk pony. <laughs> uh, I can but, I but, cannot fault him. Mm-hmm. And I am very happy to see that it's like pet registration form. Yeah, makes an awful lot of sense. I'm actually very glad to see that there is a certain legality to how many pets you are allowed to have in your house. I like that. <laughs> Uh, I know it can. I know it may sound silly, but I actually like when they touch upon that that aspect. It's like neat. That's a neat touch. Yeah, but, but that, no. that's that's all Applejack can handle. It doesn't take her long to break down and just completely lose it. And this page is just glorious. Yep. Like if you didn't like Apple Horse before, this this page should definitely make you like her. <laughs> She's brilliant in every one of her expressions. Yeah, it's just nuts. Like going through all the that thing and knowing that 
your town is run by someone who is incompetent, uh, I'll give up too. Like what Applejack saying, I, I give up. Then she, then Mayor Mayor shows Applejack another side of things. The what you call this town side, the business side. We're just seeing the bureaucracy of Ponyville, and even the mayor admits that uh, it all just seems poorly run from the outside in. It's like I don't think the inside view is any more optimistic. Hmm. I keep I keep looking at that uh, red pony with the blue mane from the uh, building management, mm-hmm. who's who's cowering on top of the file drawer, and we see her again in the background of the main hall. That fear. <laughs> That's someone who real who's realized where they are, what they're doing, and that there's no escape. Oh no! <laughs> there is no way to escape. This is our new home. <laughs> oh well, but but the next page does show something interesting: uh, the business aspect of Ponyville, because we see here that we got filthy Devonport, the cakes, rarity, and oh wow, Hayseed. Oh, uh, flaxseed. Yeah, flaxseed. Yeah, flaxseed. So we got the business, uh, or the business side of Ponyville, and well, guys, what do they do? Because I need to read up on this. Well, basically, there's a there's a argument over taxing the businesses. Basically, they're ta- they're overtaxing businesses to fix the Ponyville water pipes, mm-hmm. and of course, nobody wants to be the one to pay. The uh, speaking as American. Our entire economic system is based around finding ways not to pay for the public good. <laughs> all right. I, wow, I'm really depressed all of a sudden. <laughs> it's okay, man. Aww. It's okay. It'll get better. It'll get better. It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. You have giant hamburgers. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then Applejack brings a little bit of that no-nonsense country practicality where she proposes an idea that is actually a very good compromise, gets everyone on board quickly. And yet, th- this seems so much better than if it had been Celestia or company, because they just say, "Oh, we're keeping the sales tax." Okay, the princess is always right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, you! I'm still bitter. So this is the first sign where Applejack actually understands the nature of compromise and uh, solutions to problems involving multiple parties. Funny that Rarity doesn't say a word in this entire thing. Oh, probably she's thinking about a novel or something. Oh, she's probably checking out... Oh, let's see here. It's the comics, so Rarity's probably making googly eyes at least one guy. Probably, probably. Not filthy she, rich. But... She doesn't seem all that involved, actually. She looks kind of bored or depressed. It's like, look at that. She's... <laughs> oh, she's probably checking out the quills and sofa pony. He's uh, like... The... From Devonport. <laughs> Uh, but the next page is going to be something more. <laughs> the next page is fantastic. <laughs> it's like, oh no, they ruined the Twilight Sparkle, Princess Twilight Sparkle statue. What did they do to it? Oh god, they turned it into a G3 pony. Why? <laughs> well, in all honesty, given the fact the guy had eye surgery and currently has two band-aids over his lashes. What happened to him? Like, I'm... <laughs> he got eye surgery. The fact that he could make something even coherent is godly <laughs> if he, imagine once his eyes are healed he'll probably fix that in no time but hey ha yeah wow well, at least he put the horn on the right place yeah, that's true that true that yes yeah. oh gosh but <laughs> still this is I, I think now um applejack is getting a feel of what mayor mayor needs to do on a day-to-day basis because well you got Texas, like, um, Ponyville's businesses coming to you and complaining about their businesses. And then you got the statue thing problem. Like, this is kind of petty. And the next page, we got what? What now we have to the next page? Like, how to increase approval rates and whatnot? Basically, it's the re-election committee. Because the first thing any elected official knows to do when they take office is to start running for re-election. Wow. I am... In the depths of despair right now. I need to go get a stiff drink. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, no. I didn't know that this review was going to claim the the the, the, the so, uh, soberity of silver, but apparently it is. <laughs> oh, despair! <my God. laughs> oh. I, oh, I, sh- I broke all my glasses. Oh, you, you, out of the bottle, then. Out of the bottle. I'm so- 
Oh god. Yeah, definitely despair. <laughs> My yeah, gosh. No. no. But, but anyway, Applejack basically wins. Although I find it funny, the mayor is saying the election is in seven moons. It's always with the moons. Yeah, and, I, I need to bring that up too. What does it mean? Well, I think full moons. So that no. means it's like no, because you have a hundred moons with the yaks. Oh, we're back to the yaks. Well, the, the yak says that, and then we, this is confusing because we had... Are you sure it's, it's not full moons? Because, okay, the portal is three moons, and then the yaks are hundred moons, and then Nightmare Moon is a thousand years, so what is moon and what's years? Then, like, the apple, the apple family reunion is, what, 70 moons or hundred moons? I'm just confused. Or maybe, or maybe, hey, it's a kid's cartoon and they didn't think all that far into the mythology of it. I need to ask Larson next time. Oh, actually, they've already, this question's been asked ad, ad nauseum. Oh. Uh, let's see here. In April of 2014, Jason Thiessen was asked how long is the moon in MLP? And he answered, it's a unit time with no human equivalent. Mm-hmm. So basically, shut up and stop asking me this question. <laughs> I'm tired of it. <laughs> Well, you know, to to have a oh, to have a bit of a uh, a bit of a tangent here regarding time time and all that. For the longest, it was believed that that ponies work on an eight hour kind of cycle on the clock mm-hmm. because on the on the bird on, uh, a bird on the hoof episode, you actually see the clock on the clock tower at Ponyville, and it has eight hours marked. And that's something that was brought up because uh, somebody was reading Fallout Equestria and mm-hmm. KCAT actually took that into account. And they were, they, somebody said, why is she saying eight, uh, at eight o'clock pointing at north? I mean, eight o'clock is not north. Eight o'clock is like, you know, slightly southwest. And somebody said, no, no, it's not really that because you see ponies moving at 12, uh, not 12 hours, but eight hours. But then in a few episodes later, they changed the clock to have 12 hours <laughs> instead of 8. So there is actually no real consistency. It's just that it's that simple. You don't have to read that much into it. It's just daytime, nighttime, and there is moons there. They say moons because moons are more. the, the moon is more mystical than the sun. I mean, but so it would be much say, easier nah. or like, I, I don't know, this could be just my method of thinking, but... I would just highly appreciate if I know what's going on with time because if they just say months, I would just highly be satisfied with that. Like, uh, in seven months, they have a reaction. In seven months, the portal will open and Sunset Shimmer can come home or Twilight can go there. I mean, that would be just happy for me. I don't know. And then you have relations with the Yaks, which is a hundred moons. How... Yes, no. I just thank you. We, we, we've devoted a great deal of time to this really fluid <laughs> and it really a moon just sounds like a really long time. Yeah. 30, yeah. 30 moons sounds forever. A hundred moons. Oh, that's so long. Very long thing happening now. Can we talk about how much I hate the yaks? <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. No. Actually, uh, let, let's, let's talk about how this comic produces results. Oh yes. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I mean, not to pepper the point or anything, but, uh. <laughs> oh, god damn it. <laughs> but let, let us talk about this. Ah! Oh, aren't you glad that you are talking to us right now? <laughs> uh, well, you know, surely I don't... we are leaking, we are leaking jokes at this point. That's right. Yeah. Uh, there you go. This is radish call. Oh, you... <laughs> there you, there you potato. Uh, I mean, okay, that uh, last joke. That last joke was a real lemon uh, and banana. There you go. Uh, <laughs> We're getting, this is getting really corny. We should get to the to the core of the problem. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm I'm earning my salary here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what a melon I'm gonna do with you guys. <laughs> Oh well, oh my gosh! <laughs> well, that was a, that was amazing. By the way, we did, we don't script any of this. Yeah. <laughs> we really don't. 
Okay, now turn to the next page. Um, <laughs> turn to the next page. But they the Applejack does bring up that all of this stuff could be solved with just some common sense and a little hard work. And I guess the hard part is this is never truly addressed. Mm-hmm. By the end of this comic, nothing is going to... City Hall is not the better for it. Mm-hmm. I, I believe the situation here is this. I mean, it takes common sense to solve any problem. But sometimes when you deal with people, especially in real life, they don't want to hear to common sense. They just want to hear what they want to hear. The fact that they use bureaucracy as a way to get people annoyed and just go with whatever the government wants is kind of a way to deal with things. The people who are still not happy fight their way through. The people who couldn't be bothered just follow what they want. That's how I look at it. It's very sad and grim, but... uh. It's realistic. It's not really sad and grim. You're just having both feet on the ground. Yeah. It just sounds like sour grapes to me. <laughs> uh, oh God! Yeah. Silver, silver don't. Think, yeah, no, silver, don't no, be one no, bad no. apple. Shh, Norman is okay. No tears, only puns now. <laughs> and bananas, lots of bananas. Yeah, just try to wrap your melon around that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But now, looking at this right now, I just wonder what the hell was Sweetie Belle doing with putting. Uh, p- p- fruits and vegetables on her head and using magic around. What well, is this? It, it's like a hat, right? Or did it actually grow on her head? I, I know, but, but before that, before that, we need to set it up because the town of Ponyville, they're, they're, it's under citizens. attack! I'm sorry. <laughs> no, the, the citizens are becoming fruits. Randomly. Uh, so now that's set up and the cause is three bell turning folks into Fruits and vegetables. Yes. It's the funniest line read ever. I've made a huge mistake. And that face, aww. Yes, but I, I gotta wonder about the radish in the panel above her. It's on a skateboard, and it's got a violet comet trail of sorts. Uh huh. Is that Scootaloo? I don't see the handlebar, so it's not a scooter. It's a skateboard. I, but... I, I don't know. I mean, it's, she's saying this is highly irregular, but. I'm almost hearing that in Scootaloo's voice. I'm wondering who could it be, though. Yeah, I, I don't think it really matters because when the citizen asks for, uh, oh, I see Rainbow Jack, but sorry, <laughs> Rainbow Jack. <laughs> no, 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 it's Apple Dash. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, when the citizens ask for Apple Jack's help, she doesn't know what to do. Well, I understand that her friends just got turned and. The princess of magic is now an eggplant. We always said she was an egghead. <laughs> now she's an eggplant. Uh, well, wow. Oh, oh, oh Fluttershy is a banana. <laughs> Great. Oh, gosh, a cauliflower. She... Oh, God, I just realized Twilight now has to go after Kid Icarus. <laughs> <laughs> ah, no, no. So that means that Celestia is going to have to fight Palutena. Awesome. Mm. No, no, James, not that one. Not, not that version. He's talking about the Nintendo, that, uh, The absolute very first one. The cartoon version. Oh, oh, yeah. God. Well, anyway, I mean, <laughs> so finally yeah. the, finally the mayor gets to show, she gets to shine. Mm-hmm. And God help me, City Hall is actually useful. This has never happened in the show and hasn't happened since. Oh, yeah. But I don't know. I mean, from this point on, I, I can see why Mayor Mayor doesn't really bother with the small stuff like bureaucrats and whatnot because she has bigger problems. And that is the town of Ponyville getting destroyed on a regular basis. Yeah, like every, like every yep. other week. Oh yeah, true that. That has happened in a couple of occasions. Yeah. Yes, it Some, has. Sometimes it, it's, if it's a friendship problem, they'll deal with it in, in 30 minutes or less. Huh? <laughs> According to the show's uh, mythology, yeah. That's how they <laughs> deal with problems. Yeah. But this is oh cool. This is, this, is, this is something... I like, yeah. yeah, this is a unique setup. I actually really like this because it's so weird. It's kind of like... Makes me my head makes my head scratch like what's going on and how the hell are they going to be able to fix this? But I like how Mayor Mayor when things are when the chips are down, she knows how to react and she mm-hmm. knows how to fix things. So she calls in her crack team of cracking ponies and fixes the situation with the help mm-hmm. of Applejack, of course. 
True, true. Because if you think about it, if you think about it in the sense of what does Mir Mir do and what does Princess Twilight do, it's kind of understandable because Mir Mir here does with the small stuff while Twilight Sparkle deals with the big stuff. And she is the princess of friendship and also the princess of Ponyville. Well, they never say Ponyville, but she just ha- has a huge freaking castle there, the Outshine yeah. City Hall now. Yeah, you can true. Poke it. And kids are going to poke their eyes out on those toys. <laughs> oh, yeah, you have seen those? My gosh. Wow. The, the, one thi- the, the one thing I like about this part, actually, uh, you know how the comic started saying that, oh, bureaucracy, it's hell, it's terrible, you're going to be stuck in here forever, you're never mm-hmm. going to go anywhere. But I love the ending because they say, yeah, yeah, okay, bureaucracy is this, this, and that, but not only it... it Eventually, it works. It's there for a reason. And for one reason or another, we kind of need it. Uh, because, yeah, okay, you have to fill all those forms and spend your entire afternoon or your entire morning going from window to window, asking people for information, making sure that this is fine, but it's there to protect you. Like, okay, they can, they can screw you with taxes and all that, but they are there to cover you up, to cover you up. And yeah, sometimes they may not do their job and all that, but god damn it, if it's still being used to this day, it's because it works. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this is something, it's been proven that it is there for a reason. It's, it's useful. It's functional. So yeah, I like that it ends on that note. It's like, yeah, okay, yeah, bureaucracy can be a pain in the ass, but we need it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's there to help us. Yeah, and I do like the way that it's told with a flashback from Mary Mary's point of view because she worked so hard thinking about how to, well, win the election. And in the process, she didn't really care about the citizens. And once she lost and discovered that, what's the word I'm looking for? That, okay, um, the line here is, but I remember what motivated me in the first place. And I realized that Nothing had changed. I still wanted to help Ponyville be the best town it could be. So, well, she wanted to help Ponyville and make it the best town it can be. Unfortunately for us, Future Comics doesn't really show that. Yeah, when we get to uh, the Ponyville Civil War. Uh, Oh, God, I don't want to talk about that comic. Why does Captain America have to fight with Iron Man? Uh, because, Because Marvel thinks they'll drive up sales. Oh, uh, I don't want to talk about that comic. I really don't. <laughs> well, oh, well, we have I to. really don't. I really don't. I really don't. I think I'm going to pass on that one and I'm going to let you guys go. Oh, no. Because I don't want to touch that. Good grief. And I thought I was going to... I was. Uh, never mind. We are getting off topic. But Indeed. yeah, this is the part that you mentioned before, Silver, when you said that uh, towards the end of the comic, we do get a moment where uh, we see how Major Mer used to be or, uh, or how she is. This is what you were talking about, right? Exactly. This is this is the first real bit of characterization for her, finding out what makes her tick and what makes her see things. I think she acknowledges the the inconsistencies and the absurdities of uh, of government, but she also understands it is on hand for when the big problems need fixing. You accept some of the absurd to deal with when it's really serious, like you say. I got, certainly wish we could make it more streamlined for everybody, but. We curse it on the good days, and we beg for it on the bad ones. Mm-hmm. That's why I'll never become an anarchist. <laughs> uh, what I really like, though, is that for in this last two pages, Mayor Mayor is sort of hinting at Applejack's future. Lauren Faust has said in the Brony documentary she originally had uh, Destiny's plan for the main six. I think she skipped Spike. But... <laughs> uh, here, I could Nobody totally gets see... spike. Wow. I could totally see Applejack one day becoming the mayor of Ponyville. She loves it enough. She has its support. And the awkward thing is that from this comic, we see she may actually be better at the job than uh, the current mayor. Mm-hmm. And I, I do see that too, because when I finished reading the comic, I had that feeling of, wow, I think Applejack would be a good candidate for this because she loves Ponyville as much as any... Well, anybody, because Mary Mer loves Ponyville, and well, Applejack was a descendant of the first one. So yeah, I was yeah. 
So she would yeah, be a right. perfect candidate. Yeah, she. I never I didn't think about think about that. But yeah, you're absolutely right. The apples funded Pony helped fund Pony Bill. They should have a mayor that's part of the ancestor, the ancestry of the the Apple family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I don't. I, it's hard for me to see Applejack in politics, like doing the nitty gritty of this kind of things, because she's good at what she does, but going beyond that is something I can't see her do. I'd like to see Applejack's campaign to become mayor. Honesty. Honesty. Plus, I have a royal endorsement. Uh, I have connections in Canterlot. Uh-huh. And, and pretty soon is, is her opponent would just say, you know what? I'm out. I just, <laughs> you, you, you win. Yep. But, but if you think about it, right? Like, Applejack is holding all the apples. Like, she is in charge of that. And <laughs> she, she, oh, that's, that's the core of her campaign. Yeah, uh, vote for yeah. me or you don't get apples. <laughs> once once you get past the skin, and the, there might be a bruise, but... Oh, uh, yeah. You know what? That is a very insidious comment. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, but it's a, it's a tree-point plan. <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah, but anywho, anywho, uh, anywho. You know how difficult it is for me to keep up with the puns? I'm, English is not my first language. <laughs> Uh, so you say, but anywho, you're just a seedling in this. I understand. <laughs> James, final thoughts. Let's go for final thoughts. My head hurts. I want an aspirin. Uh, Silva, what do you think, man? Final thoughts, man. Well, I thought it was a creepy issue that managed to produce some uh, interesting bits. Uh, a veritable cornucopia of insights. It's fun and silly. If you, if you've been to a government facility recently and had to go through this, you might either laugh at the experience or feel a fresh surge of anger. <laughs> but I, do, a lot of the Friends Forever comics seem to really come into their own at the very end, mm-hmm. where, where you see how they, uh, how the characters connect and what they can mean for one another. So Applejack reminds the mayor of her younger self. Applejack might see her own future in the mayor's role. So it's an enjoyable, I won't say it's my favorite, but it's fun. It's, uh, lighthearted. It, it's so true to real life in many ways. And I'm sure we'll get an answer for how Sweetie Belle can do fruit magic, uh, in, within the next decade or so. Probably. I found it very appealing. <laughs> oh God. Uh... Okay. Pans aside for a moment. I actually, uh, find it rather, in, rather interesting how you put that, that the, the Friends Forever comics do come into their own towards the end. That that happens when the characters haven't had an interaction between them before. Uh, like with uh, Rarity and Babs comic or with uh, Princess Celestia and Spike, they do come together towards the end, yeah. But when the characters have already met in the past, and I mean like they have an already established relationship, like any of the main six with themselves, or uh, as, it it... It kind of makes sense that they will be, yeah, you know, hitting it off from the very beginning. But yeah, you're absolutely right. The friends forever to come together to the end at the at, at the end of the comic. Per usual, per usual. What about but, you, Norman? What do you think? Well, I don't know what to think about it at first because when we're dealing with politics, it's a hard topic to talk. Like, there's a few things that we are not supposed to talk about, and they are. Um, sex, politics, and racism. These three yeah. are the big no-nos in storytelling or conversation pieces. Yes. And this one, it doesn't really delve heavy into it, but it does do a lot of implications. And for how it handled it, it dealt with it pretty well. The beginning was a start, like to get the ball rolling. The middle was all the nitty-gritty stuff that we come to know of bureaucracy and the middle part is from the point of view of the inside and near the end it's all about what do they do when things get down like that is the part where they do business and in the end applejack has a future in politics so that's cool well besides all that arts is good writing is good and i say if you have the time go read it Awesome. So, James, what's next week's review going to be, man? 
I didn't even give my final thoughts. You oh, really? so thoughtless. Oh, my God, Norman. You did took my spot when Silver said about the whole thing. I like... didn't even say what I thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. You didn't feel you didn't feel the correct form to allow me to keep saying my th- final thoughts. Oh, okay, let me go and redo the form. Oh, oh, you had oh. one job. And here, here it is. This is where it ends. <laughs> <laughs> Friendship's over. That's it. I don't want to talk to you anymore, Norman. You no, don't like you need me. to fill in the form. You need to fill in the form and wait for my approval. <laughs> my approval to stop being your friend. Yes. <laughs> You are a tyrant. <laughs> uh, what do you think, man? Definitely one of my favorite Friends Forever comics, if only because of uh, how well it does its political and social commentary. Uh, it's funny, it's it's biting, and at the same time, it's really acid, but it doesn't detract from the focus, which is the... The, 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 the growing chemistry between Applejack and Major Mare. And I like that they managed to develop this character that we have seen from, from the very f- first episode of My Little Pony. I mean, Major Mare is one of the original characters that has appeared from the beginning of the show. Mm-hmm. And it's surprising that we are developing her right now. And I'm glad that they are doing it like that. So, yeah, really like this comic. Definitely one of my top five of the Friends Forever series uh, to this date. We don't know mm-hmm. what else is going to the the, the future is going to, going to bring us, but oh, good, good. This is this is a really good comic. Really like it. That's my final thoughts. Yeah, there's another combo coming out. Uh, Rarity and the uh, pie. No, Rarity and the cakes. So that's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, yeah, it will. But. That will be a story for another time. Shall mm-hmm. we talk, talk about the episode we're going to review next week? Yep, yep. What is it, man? Okay. This week, we're going to be reviewing episode 12 of season 5, overall episode 103, titled Amending Fences, written by M.A. Larson. I hope that you guys are ready to talk about woof, one woosie of an episode. If you want blast to the past, there is nothing bigger, better than that. All the feels. Yeah. One of the few episodes that... Season 1, episode 1, callback, besides Discord's riddle. <laughs> but we will be talking about that one next time. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this, and I, we hope to see you on the next review. This has been James Cork. I am Norman Sanzo. I'm Silver Quill, and I approve this podcast. <laughs> uh, no political, No political fanfare? Oh, well, if you want, uh... There's your fanfare. I wasn't expecting that, but I like it more than the other one. Yes, that's good. Oh, wow. <laughs> ah, now to throw the government into an uproar. No! No. Let's see the next ah. episode of House of Cards. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Laters. Adios. Adios.